Another question that has come in several times in the last week or so is requesting your thoughts on the late Rip Oliver, who just passed away. Oh, yeah, and we, I was going to bring this up on the experience because the news just came out. But um, I only got to manage him for like, <clears throat> gosh, I guess, what was it, four or six weeks? But he was a great guy. He had actually, I'd seen him in Louisville in 1976 when he was a rookie. He had come through and worked a couple weeks in the Tennessee Territory. Um, but I'd never met him until... We went to Dallas, and Ken Mantell said, okay, and, and tonight, plug that you've got a – I think we did it where I've, I've called him in as like a bounty hunter or a hitman or whatever to get even with somebody for something. I can't remember now. I'd have to go back and look at my Dallas tapes. But the, the crippler Rip Oliver's coming in. I obviously knew he had been on top in Portland for several years, and he came in with Billy Jack. Do you know this story? Have you heard about this, read about this? Well, I know about Billy Jack, and I always figured that they came in together just because of the Portland connection. Well, see, that was the deal that uh, Carrie had apparently been offered a part in a movie and was going to have to take time off. You know what movie? I, I do not. I think it was Rocky Four. He was one you of the know, guys yes, auditioning yes. out to him, Nikita, a few other guys. For the Russian. Yeah that Dolph Lundgren got actually Kerry probably looked more Russian than Nikita, but they might've wanted to shave it. If they'd have shaved his head, it'd kill the territory. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. So the point is Kerry thinks he's going to be in this movie and they think Kerry's going to be in a movie. And he's going to have to take time off. So they wanted another baby face and some way or another, the contact was made with the Portland office to get Billy Jack. And Billy Jack Haynes at the time had a body just as good as Carrie's and was six foot four and had the Billy Jack hat and the beard and looked like a fucking male model and, you know, and was, you know, a good worker. And lit. I mean, I know people are seeing these videos now and think, what the fuck? That's the same thing I thought when I saw him. But go back and look at what Billy Jack Haynes looked like in 1985. So anyway. Well, that was the idea that he brought Rip down because he wanted a heel that he trusted to work a program with to get him over. And that was something that was going to materialize, but they have to obviously bring Rip in and get him over first. So they put him with me as a manager since I'd been there and been several weeks and was established from the Mid-South TV. <clears throat> and then the idea, I think, Mike... Uh, Mike Von Erich was working at that time. It was in between before the toxic shock, whatever. And so they were going to work Mike and Rip. Rip could get some heat on Mike. And then Billy Jack was going to come in and be the television champion, win the TV title. And, of course, to do that, he had to beat the guy who was the current champion. And that was uh, that was Chris Adams, right? Because that's... <laughs> Billy Jack and Chris Adams from Oregon had had heat over Miss Jeannie, Lady Blossom, correct? Yeah, well, a lot of people think Jeannie was married to Chris. They were never married. Jeannie, they were never married. Jeannie was married to Billy Jack Haynes. Yes. But but Chris had been most recent in 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 her adoring eyes. And so therefore the point is Billy Jack is gonna debut. On, I remember I was there that night in Fort Worth. Billy Jack was going to debut against Chris Adams on Fort Worth television. And Chris Adams didn't show up. Not only didn't show up then, but left town for a fucking week because he didn't want to get in the ring with Billy Jack. Now, Billy Jack had in, pre in previously, this is why he always was so laid back and controlled his temper and shook hands very lightly and and was had a very low voice because he had actually, uh, we, the story we had heard, killed somebody, hitting them too hard in a fight. So he was trying to, you know, but at the same time, he had this reputation. So Chris Adams went somewhere else besides Dallas for the first week that Billy Jack was there until he could be assured that everything was on, you know, was fine and there was going to be no issues. Well, then within a few weeks, fucking uh, Carrie don't get the part in the movie and then Carrie's going to be there. Well, now it, besides the fact they didn't keep very many guys on the roster in Texas, as we've talked about, 
they've got a guy that they promised a top spot to, and the top spot's no longer available, and he's not going to stay for middle card money in Dallas when he had a sweet deal in Portland. And the guy that's been promised to be a top heel, working with one of the top guys that came with him, is not going to stick around and work with Brian Adias in a second match when he was the top heel in Portland. So they did a deal, and this was a slick thing. Rip taught me this that night. They did a deal where Mike Von Erich, I think, had broken his hand legitimately and was going to take some time off. So to suspend Rip Oliver and get him out of the territory, they had him attack Mike in Fort Worth on TV and take him to the back of the... Because in Fort Worth, the Will Rogers Arena was like a cattle arena. And they had these opening gates and things for the cattle and the horses and stuff. And it was a big wooden swinging door and he rip put Mike's hand in it and slammed the door on Mike's hand surreptitiously placing his foot in just such a place where the door would slam on his foot and it looked like a million dollars right and Mike sells it as well as Mike could sell anything and rip rip Oliver gets suspended and goes back to Portland never to come to da Dallas again and Mike is out for a while with the broken hand and carries back on the cards. And Billy Jack said, fuck it. And he, you know, left and went back to Portland. So, but, but Rip was fun and I got to manage him on some spot shows. Um, Texas stadium. You got to manage him. Texas. Well, I forgot. I was, I was there in his corner at Texas stadium. Wasn't it against Mike Von Eric? As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, or who was he against that? Or night? was it that big, was it a two ring six man? Well, not six man, but six men on each team. Wasn't it like the Freebirds and the Von Erichs versus... He wasn't in that, was he? I thought he was. Dr. Death was in that, I think. I thought Rip Oliver was. I'm going to look it up right now. I don't I don't know about that. I put it out of my memory. If that's, I, I just, all I remember is Little John and the fucked up, the worst match we had with the Fantastics because of the fucked up rules and the fucked up finish. But maybe that's made me think. But, well, in that case, then, if I was in that fucking... 12 man that makes me even more pissed off because i still i still remember our payoff was fucking less than a thousand dollars for texas stadium that's why we goddamn uh gave notice and went to work for crockett all right here it is two rings 12 men the von erics kevin Kerry, and mike and the free birds defeated chris adams gino hernandez rip oliver the one-man gang kamala and steve dr death williams with general skandar akbar and gary hart I did not go out for that. I did not go out for that. And as a matter of fact, because since that's probably Rip was fucking leaving anyway, so they probably said, nah, you got Gary and you got Akbar or whatever. And Mike I also don't, defeated Rip on the show. Th I went out for that. I went out for that. That's what it, because like I said, they didn't have but 14 guys in the territories. They'd come up on Texas Stadium. Watts would bring in major names to the Superdome, right? And have special attraction matches. In Dallas, they'd have everybody work twice. Fuck a 12-man or a battle royal plus the fucking regular match. Flair! They'd, they'd book Flair to work twice. So, you know, it was a whole different fucking uh, mental setup. But anyway. But yeah, Rip was a good guy. He was a, a good fucking heel worker. Very solid. Could cut a fucking promo. And, you know, meant what he said. And... I'm actually glad he's the perfect kind of guy to to be a resident top heel in a Portland territory like that. And it, it, the people have mentioned that the one mistake was that he went to the WWF for a little while and they used him as a middle card guy in like 87. And he went back to Portland, but it wasn't the same. They couldn't push him as the top guy because he'd been on TV there only hanging in the middle in the WWF. So they could they could they couldn't put him on top anymore because of perception. Very good point. Once once that you're portrayed uh, in a, on a mainstream, widespread basis on a major television production or whatever as a fucking twat, then that's pretty much what you're going to be, which is why a lot of guys <laughs> these days would rather go to a smaller company that would treat them better than be on the big television and be treated like a twat. So, but some people never get over their twatness.